Okay, and on to the reading one. So it's nice to see that they've actually got a normal reading one, not like in the last test. We've got some true, true false not given, seven of them, and six of these gapfuls. That's great. So we're going to go straight to the gapful. First thing that we're going to do is um, try and find where it comes from. Um, we could look at a few of these things, yes, but uh, I noticed these over here. That's pretty good to look at. So let's go and look at 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. Now you would think it's going to be from the second half, so you can go straight to the second half, but it's okay if you just go and look at a few of these dates. 1917, we're looking for 1930s, 1925. We see 1933 over there, there's 26 over there, there's 1933 over there. And then we move on to the 1930s over here. So it could start um, here, or it could start in this paragraph over here, over there. Um, a good thing that I often do is quickly go and take a look at the last one of the true false not given if the true false not given is, 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 is first then we see if there's anything in number seven that we can scan for it often helps and we see unit one over there so I would just go and quickly look and see uh, unit one is over there so you can be pretty sure that um, this is all uh, true false not given and our gapful starts over here, starts on this page. And you can do that um, fairly quickly, less than a minute, you, and you've found where, where you're going to look. Then we're going for um, <clears throat> each question, I think. Time to do each question. Now, you, you could do all the grammar first, but I think it's actually better to do grammar one by one. It tends to depend a little bit on the question type, like in the last test we had in, in passage 3, we had that summary with a box. And there it was a good idea to do all the grammar first because it gave us an idea of what we were looking for in terms of nouns and adjectives. But generally, I think, with this kind of thing, with this kind of gapful, I think it's a better idea to just do the grammar one by one as you're doing the answer rather than um, do it all first. But it's not bad if you want to do it all first. All right, so um, what we're looking for here, of course, is a noun. His something, something that belonged to more. So we're looking for a noun. It could be uh, single or plural, countable, uncountable. So actually, we want to go and find uh, Royal College. We can look for Leicester Galleries, but Royal College is what we want to really find. And uh, it's not, pretty, uh, not, not very difficult. We can see it immediately over there. And um, so, what are we looking for? So we know we're in this sentence, m most probably going to be in the sentence over here. So what are we looking for? Now we do a little bit of detailed reading. And Moore is urged, okay, maybe you don't know what that means, don't panic, to offer his something and leave the Royal College. So he's urged to offer his something and leave the Royal Col College. But immediately I see the word his over there. And there you go. That's your answer. Simple as that. Urged means he was asked or he was asked quite strongly. He was strongly encouraged to, uh, to do something. Um, and that a synonym for urged is there were calls. People called upon him to do something. So don't worry too much about it. I think you could see that straight away. And... Um, and there's your answer, resignation. Right. Um, then, 1940s. I think here I would just go and look a little bit more. 19, you see, this is 1950s, but it's quite useless. There's no answers there. We just want to see which paragraphs relate to the 1940s. I see there's 1950 over here, so I think this, and there's 1944 over there. So I think this is 1950s, and actually we're not going to use that at all. And um, so then these one, two, three, four paragraphs. Oh no, the 1930s, 1930s, oh there, in 1940, yeah. Just one, two paragraphs is where we're going to get our answers from. So that's that's quite nice to see because it's one, two, three, four, five marks in those two paragraphs. Um, right, 
let's get going. Moore turns to drawing because something for sculpting are not readily available. Now, please do your grammar. Don't forget to do the grammar. Um, we're doing the grammar one by one. Can you see a very important grammar clue in this question? I'll give you a hint and let's look at the verb. There we go. That is super important. That helps you. What does that tell you? If you don't know, think about it. Pause the video. I need you to know this. What does that tell you? What it tells you is that this is a plural. It's probably got an S on it, unless it's an irregular plural. But the point is, it's a plural. It's not singular and it's not uncountable. If it was singular, then this would be is. If it was uncountable, this would be is. So this gives us a very important clue that we are looking for a plural noun. So detailed reading, he turns to drawing because something for sculpting are not available. So it's why did he decide to do drawing because something for sculpting are not available. So we start over here. Uh, I guess we're looking for drawing and sculpting as our keywords, but they're not very strong keywords because they're going to be everywhere. Anyway, uh, he moved to a farmhouse. A shortage of materials forced him to focus on drawing. There's drawing. Um, so, he did numerous sketches of Londoners later. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so I think we would be in this sentence over here. Um, he was a sculptor, this guy. And then, um, because there was a shortage of materials, that forced him to focus on. What's our synonym for focus on? Where is it? Uh, turn to. He turned to drawing. He focused on drawing. Why? And now we're looking for a plural noun. And then it's quite easy. If we want a plural noun, shortage of materials. There's our plural. That's the only plural in that sentence. You could look around a little bit, uh, sketches, ideas, but um, drawings, but um, they don't fit. They don't fit. Not readily available. Can you see the synonym for not readily available? And that is a shortage. If there was a shortage something, it means there was not a lot of it. So... Again, quite simple, especially if you use the grammar to tell you that you're looking for a plural noun. Just notice that this whole thing is in the present tense. Uh, turns is, is, it's not past tense. Usually these things are in the present tense. It's possible that they can do it in the past tense. There's no rule that says they can't. But um, it's nice if it's in the present tense because... When it's in the present tense, the, the verbs help us. Um, because in the past tense, the verb is same. It's like, the verb is the same. It's, um, it started, they started. The verb is the same. But with the present tense, um, it's is and are and walk and walks. And that tells us information. So it's nice if it's the present tense. Because the verbs help us. While visiting his hometown, Moore does some drawings of... So we're going to have a um, noun there. It's probably going to be plural because it's drawings. And there's no a uh over there or the. So we only want one word. So it's probably going to be a plural. <clears throat> anyway, while visiting his hometown, he does some drawings of... Where were we? He did numerous small sketches of Londoners. Uh, it's actually a little bit of a trick. Sketches of Londoners... This is drawings. I don't know if you know that word. To sketch is to draw. He did some small sketches of Londoners, turning these ideas into large colored drawings. Okay, but the important thing is while visiting his hometown. So we don't know what his hometown is. That's, that maybe it makes it a little bit difficult. What you could do here, I don't know if, if, if you will, um, is, to is to go to the beginning and see if you can find where his hometown was. And we see there that it's Castleford. I don't know if many students will be able to do that. But the fact that he returned to Castleford means he went back to Castleford also gives us a clue that um, Castleford is his hometown. So what are we looking for? He, when he was in his hometown, he does some drawings of what? What did he draw? 
So if he was in his hometown, maybe he, if London was his hometown, then he did some drawings of Londoners, but he returned to Castleford and Castleford is his hometown. So then he did a series of sketches, sketches his drawings of, and there is our plural noun, miners. So I think that could have been a little bit confusing if you didn't um, know where his hometown was. Was his hometown Castleford or was his hometown London? Right. Moore, so maybe slightly difficult, but not too bad. Moore is employed to produce a sculpture of a. Ah, great. Grammar tells us we're looking for a singular noun. So he is employed. Somebody pays him money or gives him a job to produce a sculpture of a. Ah. Where are we? So he did the miners and then a town, a commission. Unfortunately, it's difficult language. A sculpture depicting a family is the phrase that you wanted to uh, see. If you look around a sculpture of, uh, you could look a little bit further. We've got a bit of time and um, I don't see any phrase with a sculpture of a. This phrase here, a sculpture depicting a. So they just placed of with depicting. Depicting is a nice word. It's showing a picture of or showing basically. And quite straightforward. We can get our singular noun there. So I don't think that was too bad. If you saw a sculpture of a, uh, a sculpture depicting a. Uh. Right. Something start to buy Moore's work. Again, let's look at the grammar, please. If you uh, just pause the video, what do you see about the grammar? Once again, the verb helps us. This verb is talking about this subject and it's not starts. If it was starts, then we know we're looking for singular or countable, but it's start. And that means that this again is going to be a plural noun. So as you can see, that's why the present tense verbs help us. If it was past tense, it would be started or started. So uh, please notice these. They really help us. So again, we're looking for Plural noun. And who starts to buy his work? So we got to look. We're looking for plural nouns. Um, moving away. Studies. Who starts to buy? Buy, buy, buy. And there's actually nothing um, about buy. So let's focus on the plural noun. And copies. Copies can't buy. Studies can't buy. But collectors can buy. These are people who collect artwork. So they buy the work. And I think the main thing was that it is a plural noun and that's what helped you there. It just shows you how powerful the grammar can be. Because there were only one or two plural nouns in that paragraph and the other ones didn't make any sense. So even if you don't know what a collector is, you can maybe even guess. All right. His Moore's, notice uh, something that belongs to Moore, increased, definitely a good scanning word. We will have a synonym for it, but you know all the synonyms. Makes it possible for him to do more ambitious sculptures. Makes, again with the verb, but this time that means that this is going to be a singular noun or a countable noun because we have the S over there. His increase something makes it possible for him to do more ambitious sculptures. I actually want to find something about increased. Something went up. Something grew. It will be a synonym, but you know all of the synonyms. And where are we? So, uh, collectors is over there. So, we're actually just looking somewhere over there. So, it's not going to be very difficult. Can you see the synonym for increase? And it's something about going up. It's a positive word. And there it is over there. To boost means to increase. The boost to his income. It's an uncountable noun. Um, Moors is the his. Boost is increased. So quite straightforward income. It was only one possible sentence that it can come from. So it wasn't too difficult to find. All right, so really not too bad at all. Definitely the grammar helped you a, lit, a, a bit, a lot even, and um, it wasn't difficult to find where everything was. It was very nicely laid out. I wish they were all like this. So I think you can get 
five or six out of six there. Uh, what can we take away from this? I think, once again, just look at these verbs. Look at the grammar. That helped you a lot. Right, let's move on to the true, false, not given. All right, and on to these um, <clears throat> true, false, not given. Now, I'm doing these Cambridge 15s based on the assumption that you've done my true, false, not given videos and you've done maybe Cambridge 12, 13, 14, because I, I'm going to talk about target language and scanning language, which is an important skill to develop for true, false, not given. And uh, I, I hope that you know what I'm talking about when I talk about target language. All right. On leaving school, <clears throat> Moore did what his father wanted him to do. So this one, the target language is not so great. It's just, did he do it or did he not do it? Um, initially, I thought this was going to be uh, not given because they very often use not given as the first one. But don't take that as, as always, please. Um, let, so let's take a look. On leaving school and father. We're going to go right up to the first paragraph. That's where it's going to be. We can find quickly uh, after leaving school, on leaving school, exactly the same thing. Moore hoped to become a sculptor, but important, instead he complied with his father's wish, there's father, that he train as a school teacher. So <clears throat> it all rests on this, um, this verb, and, and you probably don't know what that verb means. So you've got to try and guess from the rest of the sentence. Did he do what his father wanted or did he not do what his father wanted? What does complied mean? Does it mean he went with his father or he went against his father? And you can see from this, he, Moore himself, he wanted to become a sculptor. But, and there's a contrast marker over there, that means that he didn't become a sculptor. Instead, he did what his father wanted him to do. He didn't do what he wanted to do. So that contrast marker over there tells you uh, <clears throat> about the information over here. His father wanted him to be a, t a school teacher. He wanted to be a sculptor. <clears throat> and he complied with his father. He did what his father wanted him to do. So the target language here was did or did not. Um, not such great target language, but Actually, he did comply. He did what his father wanted him to do. So the answer is true. Right. <clears throat> Excuse my throat. Um, Moore began studying sculpture in his first term at Leeds School of Art. Where do we think is the um, target language? I would say it's here. When did he start st um, studying sculpture? Was it in his first term or was it in a different term? Leeds School of Art, let's find. <clears throat> so he enrolled at the Leeds School of Art where he studied for two years. In his first year, he spent most of his time drawing. Although he wanted to study, study sculpture, it's in his first year, no teacher was appointed until his second year. At the end of that year, he passed the sculpture e examination. So. In his first year, he spent most of his time drawing. He wanted to do sculpture, but there was no teacher, so he did not do sculpture in his first year. And here they're using first year, second year as first term, second term. It's just a little synonym that IELTS has thrown in um, to try and confuse you. Term and year here are just the same. Um, so he didn't begin studying sculpture because there was no teacher available. So that is the target language. Um, that should be in his second term. So that will be false. <clears throat> when he started at the Royal College of Art, its reputation, this its is talking about the Royal College of Art, its reputation for teaching sculpture was excellent. So here then he moves to the, he was awarded, don't go straight there. Uh, you must see Royal College of Art there. He passed the sculpture examination and went and, and got a scholarship to Royal College of Art in 21. He moved to London, advanced study. I don't see anything about reputation being excellent. I suspect this is going to be not given. Let's move on and uh, come back to it. He became aware of ancient sculpture as a result of visiting London museums. Definitely... Um, 
that's going to be uh, i think we are looking for, for museums but we're also looking for ancient sculpture as a result of visiting london museums so many of the london museums there is our keyword ancient sculpture <clears throat> ancient sculpture is there which had a wide range so he visited many of the museums which had a wide ranging collection of ancient sculpture he discovered the power and beauty of ancient Egyptian and African sculpture. So discovered, yes, became aware of. He discovered the ancient sculpture when he was at the museums. No problem, I would say that is uh, true. So there's no really great target language in this one. I think it's, I think maybe uh, that could be the target language, but it's not really clear target language. It's just a simple sentence. It's like, did he or did he, didn't he? And so he became aware of ancient sculpture. He discovered the power and beauty of ancient sculpture in these museums. Not too bad, I would say. Quite straightforward. So now we know where we're going to look for this one. Um, notice how you bounce around with these true, false, not givens. Um, reputation, excellent Royal College of Art. It has to be where it has to be somewhere over here and I don't see anything about reputation and excellence so I'm quite um, happy then to go back and call that one not given the Trocadero Museum this is a really nice um, passage because there's so much to scan for so much clear scanning language Trocadero Museum's Mayan sculpture attracted a lot of public interest. I think um, that will be our target language. The, the Mayan sculpture in the Trocadero Museum attra attracted a lot of public interest. So here we go. He visited the Trocadero Museum. He found a Mayan sculpture. It was blah, blah, blah. It was describing the sculpture. Where's public interest? He became fascinated power originality i don't see public public interest so probably not given let's skip and go on he thought the mayan sculpture we're still talking about the mayan sculpture was similar in certain respects to other stone sculptures definitely that's our target language similar different all of that sort of stuff to other stone sculptures so what did moore think about the mayan sculpture did he think it was similar or did he think it was different he became fascinated with this stone sculpture, that's the Mayan sculpture, which he thought had a power and originality. That means already our answer is there. Originality means it was quite unique. That no other stone sculpture possessed. Possessed means had in this sense. So no other stone sculpture had it. So that means it was different to all other stone sculptures. So therefore it was not similar. So that's quite a clear uh, false right then a lot of public interest i can go back to that one i didn't see anything about a lot of public interest because uh, i know that we're just going to look over here it has to be somewhere in there nothing about a lot of public interest so yes let's do that one uh, as not given as well now we've got three true, three falses, three not given, so this last one could be anything. We know where um, this is, unit one. Uh, that's in that last paragraph. When we were checking earlier, we saw it there, unit one. So what do, want, what do they want to know? The artists who belong to unit one wanted to make modern art and architecture more popular. I think that would be our target language. Did, what did they want to do about modern arch, art and art architecture? Did they want to make it more popular or maybe more widespread or more expensive? It, it, I think this is like an adjective kind of question. The aim of the group, there we are. The aim of the group is what did they want to do? To convince the public of the merits of art and architecture. To convince the public of the merits of arch, art and architecture. Um, in this sort of thing, that uh, is actually kind of in, uh, useless information. It's just extra information. Um, so what is merits? Merits is advantages. It's, it's positive aspects. 
So if you convince somebody that something is good, it means you're making it more popular with them, yes. I think it's quite a difficult one, maybe the most difficult one of all of these, but our target language is more popular, convince of the merits of it. So yes, I'll go with true over there. All right, and that's the end of that. That was actually very nice. Um, I wish IELTS would all do all of them like this, especially after that last one in test two where they had a reading passage three is the passage one. This is standard passage one. It's all great. Um, <clears throat> you can do very well here. 11 or 12, I would say, out of 13. They've got lots of scanning language. They've got the standard format, some true, false, not given, and then some gap fill. Lots of scanning language where you could find everything. There were dates that you could look for. There were names that you could look for. Um, there was a lot of help in the, uh, from the grammar in this one over here. So, and they also, they took this from the first half. They took this from the second half. It's possible they could take this from everywhere and take this from everywhere, but they didn't do that first. They did it half and half. So there were lots of things that actually helped you in this passage. So this is the kind of thing that you hope you can get. Uh, I would say something like this will be maybe 70% chance that you're going to get a nice one like this. And uh, the, it'll be great if you get something like this in the, in the test. This is IELTS behaving itself. However, usually if they give you an easy one, then the next one is a difficult one. So let's wait and see. Okay, and on to the reading passage two.